Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about trellising. I'm going to show you the trellises now in August so that you can see how they're supporting mature plants. And one of the keys to trellising is you have to make sure the trellises are strong enough, sturdy enough to hold mature plants because they can get really heavy. So a couple things to keep in mind is you can look anywhere for possible for material for possible trellising. This comes from an area that has been a farm. They're not using this. I was able to get some of it and it's probably used for fencing or concrete reinforcement. But check out landscaping companies, uh, cement companies, construction companies, farms. Sometimes if you can you know, find a connection through friends or family or something, you can find all these materials that you can repurpose, save yourself some money. Now in here I have ladder mesh. I'll show you how we're supporting, how I'm supporting the uh, sweet potatoes. You can find that at Home Depot, but it's not at every Home Depot or Lowe's. It's a masonry product. They come in 10 foot pieces and you can usually find them by the rebar and concrete. I like them because they are so, so versatile. They're lightweight, they're easy to work with. And I've just made an arch with them here and right back there for the sweet potatoes to grow up. And then I've cut some in half and made smaller arches. So I just kind of created a trellising section with the ladder mesh. And then I put two pieces together, together to build a bigger arch. And the vine is starting to crawl up that way. It's a great material to use in your garden. Here's a couple more examples of that, easier to see. This is the size they come in. They might be I don't know, I don't know if they're eight feet, 10 feet. They'd probably come in different um, heights depending on where you're buying the material, but you can get it eight, 10, 12 feet. And you can just build these little rainbows, grow different things up it. That is a ladder I got at a yard sale. It was 10 bucks. So you can use different items. Coming inside, this is a piece of four foot by six foot, four feet by eight foot. You'll find this in different sizes too. And this is used to reinforce concrete when you're uh, pouring uh, usually the bases for structures like a shed or something like that. But you can find this again at the big box stores by the concrete, by the rebar. And this is a tomato plant fully supported by just dropping this in along the edge of the raised bed and then filling it with dirt. And this is, you know, it flexes, but it's completely sturdy and I'm growing an entire tomato plant on it. That's pretty cool. And that's the first time I did that this year. A couple more examples of the ladder mesh. Those are fire rings down there and I just popped them in and I was growing peas up those in the spring. Um, beans were up there earlier. I have a tomato plant in there now and these will be converted back to pea plants. Okay, let's go over to this side. Here's another example of the metal that's used to reinforce concrete and they come in sheets like in just pieces you just pick them up Lowe's Home Depot you can pop them in these are in a fabric pot it's a nice way to keep the larger fabric pots popped open and you can see I grew cucumbers in there those are beans those were bush beans that we're using some of the support this will all get ripped out this is getting converted over to peas also tomatoes these are more cages but it's also for support these are the stronger, thicker metal tomato cages, and you want to get the quality tomato cages. If you get the thin, wiry ones, they're just going to fall over. Just wanted to pop in an example of those. And these are holding indeterminate tomatoes with a pretty heavy load on there, so they work. The thinner ones I use for pepper plant support, and this is what they look like. I mean, it's just a thicker wire, much more sturdy. That's going to hold a tomato plant. You can just get bamboo poles, tie them off like this, create a teepee, perfect for popping into containers. That's a determinate variety of tomato. Two T posts, well, several different materials. T post, that's a hollow metal post co covered in plastic. Just pop in what you have, bringing some string across there, letting the cucumbers grow vertically. That is a dark green zucchini that's going to be tied to the T-post going that way and I'm kind of supporting that vine growing upward. These T-posts right here, um, let me show you an example. This is an 8 foot T-post. This is from Tractor Supply. They are solid. They're about 6 bucks. I like them because they're just nice and heavy. They're inexpensive in the long run. These will outlast you in your garden so you can have these for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. 
eight foot T post goes in two feet, strong enough to support this heavy beef steak, which produces really big tomatoes. And this is not going anywhere. Here's an example of what I was just showing you over on that side. These are just three posts. They're about eight feet. You want to make sure when you're buying it that you're thinking of sinking your posts at least a foot into the ground, sometimes further depending on what you're using um, and what you're growing up them for support. But just three simple posts, tie the string across any design you want as the cucumbers grow up or whatever crop you're growing up them, it will cover your, you know, <laughs> your fancy work there and you'll just have a wall of cucumbers. These are acorn squash, butternut squash, the trellis is working really well. Just a tip with your winter squash, they will root out from wherever the vine grows. So I grow some vertically. I let some come downward so that they create new anchor roots in the ground and that helps keep them healthy with more root systems. This way if that vine board gets in and damages stems in certain places, you have redundant root systems. Let's see if we can get in there. So where I showed you that tomato, that's the concrete mesh that was curved in that raised bed. This one is set on its side and it's tied to some T-post and I'm using that as a trellis. And then in here, you'll see a T-post right there. There's a T-post on that side and that's just basic roll of fencing, four feet wide that I unrolled and secured to the T-posts. T-posts are nice because they're metal, they're solid, they anchor into the ground well. This is a different type of t-post you can find those most at most home depots that's the fencing and it just drops right in to these little latches that are on the t-post you could also tie them on there but you get a sense of how you can construct trellises using different material and this is a solid trellis holding up two butternut squash vines and two acorn squash vines right there. Bamboo posts are great for trellising peas. I have peas planted in there. Let's go around to this side. So these are two varieties of green beans, yard longs and your standard green bean, pole bean. Easily 10 feet tall. They are growing. I'll show you an example where you can see it more cleanly, but they are growing on closet wire rack. You can see the white wire in there. You pick those up at your big box stores. If you're building closets out, you want different kinds of shelving. I just put them into the ground vertically. I sink, so we come down here, you can see. I just sink a T-post right into the ground, and then I put the wire rack right onto there and secure them. And I have one right there, one right there, maybe 12 inches wide, and that's enough to secure several bean plants growing up each side. Here's another example using wire racks. You can buy different kinds from that shelving section and these are just put on wooden posts secured to there with some jute but they're shorter and I did one, two, three of them and I just grew my wall of cucumbers along there. These plants are all coming out. I like peas. This will be transitioned over to another variety of pea. But they work really well and I recommend growing vertically even though these plants are beat up. It's near the middle of August. These produced from May through June through July and into August. It was really easy to manage them growing them vertically. Here is an example of the taller wire racks just real quick so that you can see. And these are probably on their fourth year or fifth year here and nothing's growing up those right now but they would have been perfect for beans. These are the eight foot T posts supporting all these tomatoes in there. And here's the example of yard long beans growing up that wire rack. And I like it because it's not too wide. It's perfect. I tucked it right in here between my tomato plants. You can be as creative as you want. These are six eight foot posts just hammered into the ground. And this is the ladder mesh that I was talking about and I just kind of slid them over the post and these would be perfect for beans. There were beans on here. Another ladder I picked up cheaply. That is deck railing. You can buy the entire piece. So I bought two pieces from probably Home Depot. 
and then you just get a latch and you screw the latch in and this will close up flat easy to store open it up you can grow something up there we'll come right over to this this is cattle panel probably one of my favorite materials four feet wide 16 feet long you will need a truck to be able to move this around I have not found anybody that delivers this so you do have to pick it up but one piece popped into the raised bed there the outward pressure of it wanting to open secures it against the outer part of the raised bed putting it into this side and then it just creates this wonderful arch that I'm growing cucumbers up one side beans the other side and if we spin through here T-posts, other kinds of posts, metal wire going all the way through, and I just did a weave of my tomato plant. So that's one way to use posts, metal wire. Metal wire would last a long time. If you're using jute or string, it breaks down. So this is a little bit more permanent. T-posts again. Cattle panel, one piece, creating the eight foot arch. Cherry tomatoes on both sides, and then another arch or another piece on the back side to create an eight foot arch, eight foot tall, eight foot deep, and then I can walk through here and I grew my ch cherry tomatoes right up there. These are basic A-frame trellises. Um, there's not a specific name and I got these at a local hardware store, but these also collapse and I grow my watermelons up them and then back down again. And it's just a great way to save space. And I have a couple melons doing really well in there. Sometimes you may need something really tall for trellising. And I think we'll end here. These are telescoping poles. They go up, I would say, at least 18, 24 feet. And these are used to put purple martin birdhouses on top. So these are repurposed. I got them at Tractor Supply. And the poles slide down into each other. I secure them in the ground by digging a hole, pouring concrete, setting them up, and then I can telescope these up during spring, let the hop spines grow up them, and then if I need to harvest, I can bring them back down. When the hop spines are gone, I drop the post back down and that's gone. But that's a great way to really build a very high trellis. You can even run string across them and then slide them up if you're growing something massive and you want a wall of some sort of flower, vegetable, or hops vines. Now, let me show you the wire cages. Coming on this side, I have pepper plants. These are the wimpy wire cages that are sold for tomato plants, but I don't recommend them. They bend really easy. This is just not gonna support a tomato plant, but it's great for pepper plants, either in the ground um, or in containers. And just for comparison, you can see how thin this is. And these are the more sturdy tomato cages. Let's walk back in here. I want to just show you something I'm doing with the PVC. Give you a view of the trellises. So that's the cattle panel arch tunnel. Cherry tomatoes all on this side. And you know they do really really well. You can buy PVC. This is used for plumbing. And you can build different kinds of trellises with it. Nothing is really growing up here yet. But you can combine materials. That's the ladder mesh that I just rainbowed over. And then I sink in rebar. And this is how you can be creative. Pieces of rebar right into the ground, hammer it in. And then you can drop half inch, one inch, three quarter inch, whatever you want to set up with respect to the PVC on top of the rebar. And then you can just secure it in different places and you can build yourself a really nice trellis. These are beans growing up something, something similar to the PVC, but it's just wood. I put one wood post in there, one wood post in there, one wood post in there, and then they come up and they crisscross right up here, and I tie them off. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it a little bit in there. I will attach the video that shows a lot of these trellises without growth on there if you want to take a look at that. But this is really secure. Lots of beans, bean plants. Three pieces of wood at angles. So they crisscross. Works really well. You can also do something with nature. If you want to grow 
the 10 feet, 12 foot tall sunflower seeds. You can let bean plants trellis up them, you can let cucumbers trellis up them, and they actually work really, really well. And this is a smaller arch right in here. This is just one piece creating that arch. And the way that I set this up was putting in four foot T posts like that, and then I just drop the cattle panel in there, it pushes outward, and these T posts keep it secure on both sides. Thanks for watching. I hope this gives you some ideas of different ways you can grow vertically, trellis your plants. It will save you a lot of space, and I highly recommend growing vertically because you can just create so many different cool designs. I mean, look at that sunflower. If that had green beans growing up there, it would look really, really cool. But you can create all kinds of garden art using trellises. It's functional, it's beautiful, and it's really inexpensive if you look around. Thanks again for watching, and please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.